Goshen College's men's volleyball team continued their season last Friday in a home game against Lords University. The Leaves went in having a season-winning record of 2-1 with 213 attacks, including 12 aces up their sleeves. Unfortunately, they had to take the loss against Lords, but did not go down without a fight. A little more timid in the first set, but they brought the heat in the second set, fighting neck and neck with a total of 35 attempts, 13 of which were kills, but eventually losing a closed set with 25 to 23. Lords University pulled some fast ones on the Leafs and took the final set, leaving the overall score as 3-0. However, leadership on the team did show. Senior player number 10, Marco Fraticelli, led the team in terms of serves with 19 assists, while freshman player number 6, Cameron Snaden, led the team in attacks with 25 total attempts. So other than Fraticelli and Snaden, there are a lot of natural leaders on this team. Head coach Jim Doherty has a lot of confidence in them as they continue improving throughout their season and working well as a group. Their next game will be at home next Friday, March 23rd at 6 p.m. against Lawrence Technological University. This has been your 574 Sports Men's Volleyball Recap with Sam Horsch. Here for 574 Sports, my name is Spencer Buttermore. And I'm Brad Stoltzfus. And we're going to sit down and take a look at some baseball right now. Uh, taking a look at the weekend, you guys are going to get set to take on uh, Spring Arbor University. That's going to be the home opener and also the conference opener. Uh, what can we expect from this three-game series over the weekend? Well, first things that we got to look at our own team, Goshen. I mean, we have to consistently hit one through nine. Uh, in past years, that's what's been successful for us is when we can hit consistently through our lineup throughout the season. Uh, we saw great strides in that early last year, throughout the season last year, rather. Uh, and then earlier in some seasons, uh, my freshman year, my sophomore year, we just couldn't piece it together one through nine. So uh, we're really looking to uh, get the starting pitching out early for Spring Arbor specifically uh, because uh, they're thin in their bullpen, so we want to get to that. Okay, so you, looking at some of the uh, overall standings right now is you guys sit at, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth place in the Crosswoods League right now. That's just overall in the season so far, sitting at 7-9. and nine. And also, uh, Spring Arbor is right below you guys in the sixth spot at 7-11. We, we were talking uh, just a moment ago how Spring Arbor counts some of those games towards uh, their fall ball as well. Right, yeah. All, all of the, uh, none of, no conference games have been played yet. Um, and so right now, we're basing everything off of non-conference schedule, which uh, can really vary from team to team. I mean, if you look at Grace's non-con schedule, it's not as strong as ours. It's not as strong as Taylor's. But, um, you know, that, that just varies. And then there's only a certain amount of games that you can actually record in the fall in terms of how many of those count, if you will. Uh, so you can play scrimmages all you want, but you can only have two, at least in NAIA, you can only have two of those uh, actually be games that count toward uh, the record. So I think we went one and one in the fall or or something like that. So that would also count toward our um, our schedule. But, uh, yeah, as for most teams, again, it's it's just non-conference games we've played so far. So Friday is going to be a big test. Yeah, so you guys open up the season on Friday at home, uh, the conference season that is. But uh, you guys got to hit the road here coming up in the next week or so as uh, next Tuesday at Mount Vernon. Uh, then over the weekend on a road trip as well, and then right back to Mount Vernon. So teams get 55 games in a season that you can play, uh, and of course a lot of those are non-conference because uh, you play, if my math is right, 27 conference games. So more than half of your games are non-conference. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is the conference games mean so much when you do play them, uh, but at the same time you only get five home series and that alternates from year to year so last year we had five home series in conference this year we're only going to have four we have our home opener that will start our conference schedule and then we'll be traveling to mount vernon and we travel to saint francis and uh yeah we're on the road a lot as a baseball team <laughs> yeah and we we know that mount vernon drive is such a long drive especially just to go over there for a nine inning game i mean if you're going over there for a double header uh usually uh, you got something to look forward to almost. You got two games to play, but uh, nine innings only about a three-hour game. So how's that may maybe gonna affect the team? Well, hopefully not at all. I mean, we we uh, went to Mount Vernon. The last time we actually went to Mount Vernon would have been my freshman. No, would have been my sophomore year. So twenty sixteen in the spring, and uh, we lost that game in in the uh, in the playoffs. 
but we haven't really gone to Mount Vernon since then because, uh, oddly enough, they had we had two home series against them in the last two seasons. So um, every team's got to do it. They have to do it more than we do, uh, these, these long trips. So it's really no excuse once we're on the field. Yeah, so you guys got a lot of uh, good road ahead of you, but it sounds like you guys are uh, gelling pretty well right now, would you say? Yeah, certainly. Uh, again, once we get that lineup consistently going one through nine, uh, we fill in little pieces. A huge loss to our season was Quinlan Armstrong. Uh, I mean, uh, you take out a gold glover and a middle of the lineup guy and, and uh, some freshmen and, and in some cases some pitchers are forced to replace his position and it's just not the same. So we're still dealing with that. We're still, um, you know, hurt by the fact that he's not playing with us and, and so is he, but at the same time, next guy up, you know, contribute because you're on a team – and, uh, and and you're expected to perform. All right, well, hey, good luck this weekend, Brad, and uh, I will talk to you again, I'm sure, about uh, some baseball coming up here as you guys have many games uh, coming up here in just a few weeks. Thanks, Spencer. Yeah, no problem. For 574 Sports, my name's Spencer Buttermore. Welcome to 574 Sports. My name is Tanner Camp, and to my left here we have Ryan Hardig, senior for the baseball team. He is this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. For that week, he batted a 636, which is 7 for 11, in the three-game series against Clear University, in which they won two games, 4-3 in extra innings, and 4-2, and lost the other one, 1-3. One he currently leads the team in batting average at 449 while riding an 11-game hitting streak. First off, Ryan, congratulations on Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week. Thanks, Tanner. I appreciate it. Uh, how does it feel to be this week's Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week? Honestly, it is a real honor to be Maple Leaf Athlete of the Week because it really shows off the hard work that I put in this offseason, and uh, it's just great for the team. And it definitely shows one of many seniors, but one of the more noteworthy ones. Again, big-time congratulations. Thank you. So, you know, senior year, a lot of pressure on it, especially after last year with the team. What was your mindset going into the season? Uh, this offseason, uh, I worked really hard, so I uh, really put in a lot of effort in the weight room to get better because I knew that I had to fulfill some spots that we were missing with seniors last season. So uh, this season, put in that work, and uh, I'm sitting here in the four spot in the lineup, and uh, I was just looking for more RBI production from me uh, so I can help the team get more runs and get more wins. And a great mindset for those who may not know, the team was one game away from making it to the national tournament, and that's great <clears throat> motivation to use to, to cap off a great senior year. Absolutely. So you talked about, you know, in the off season while here at school, but um, while oh, over summer, what did you end up doing or what were you focused on, especially over the summer? Um, yeah, just getting stronger and faster. Uh, I did a lot of running over the summer, and uh, like I said, I can't reiterate how important it is to hit those weights. Uh, really helped me get stronger for more doubles and triples and even home runs this season. Yeah. And that's, you know, great mindset. Stay focused on a bunch of different things, but especially weights over the summer. So fantastic job of that. So, you know, again, we talked about that very unfortunate one game away from making it to the national tournament. So, you know, most teams usually have a goal that they have of just some sort. What would you say that uh, this team's goal for the season is after just last year being one game away from making it to the national tournament? Yeah, for sure. Uh, last season was a devastating end for the season. Uh, just that one game shy of uh, making the national bid there. Um, <clears throat> you know, this season we set out a lot of goals and everybody has their roles and expectations. And uh, I mean, we're expected to fulfill our shoes from last year and, you know, get back to the semifinal final game and get the win and hopefully move, go down south for uh, the extra month of May there and get more wins and uh, get Goshen on the map for baseball. And a lot of incoming talent that we're all very excited for and a lot of returning players, very noteworthy. So, good team this year. I know we're all looking forward to that. So, you know, still fairly early in the baseball season, got a lot left. What would you say that as of right now, your favorite moment has been so far? Oh, my. Uh, yeah, we're only about 15 games into the season. And, I mean, uh, probably my favorite moment would be uh, we just played Cleary this past weekend and Colby hit that walk-off hit. And uh, that just goes to show uh, – how uh, important every at-bat is and how all our guys are locked in and it uh, just 
absolutely inspirational that our guys are willing to step up to the occasion. And really emphasizing the idea that with this team, no matter what year you are, whether it be a freshman, senior, no matter what, anyone can make a big play like Colby did, only a sophomore. Um, and then, you know, final season for baseball, what are you most looking forward to for throughout the rest of this season? Yeah, um, I mean, my, my freshman year, we uh, just missed the tournament, shy there, uh, but, you know, ever since my sophomore year, we've been in the tournament, and again, pushing forward to get to the tournament and, uh, you know, be in that last round and the championship game to win. Looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully I've had high goals for myself. Uh, hopefully my main goal is to be all conference. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that and hopefully keep this season going to a smooth sailing end here. And we're all really excited to see how both you and the entire team does throughout the rest of this season. Ryan, with that, do you have any final thoughts, comments, inspirational quotes? No, I just want to thank you guys for uh, my time. <laughs> well, we appreciate having Ryan on the show. Ryan, thanks again, my man. Really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate I'm Tanner it. Camp here with Ryan Hardick. You're on 574 Sports.